Hey y'all, it's time for some damn good content. I'm Shelby Claymall, your host and business bestie. I'm a content creator, social media manager and coach, keynote speaker, wife, and a mama of two who ditched her nine to five to build a thriving multi six figure business solely using social media. Just like you, I'm a working mom and a wife with limited time. So I'm committed to cutting the fluff and delivering tips and fresh ideas straight to your earbuds on how you too can harness damn good content and create that type of business that you love and are proud of. Each week, we'll deep dive into strategy and mindset of building your brand on social media so that your confidence and success in the online space can skyrocket. Get ready to step outside of your comfort zone and start creating some damn good content. Are you ready? Let's freaking get it. All right, guys, welcome back to the Damn Good Content Podcast with Shelby Claymall. I have the one and only Taylor O'Brien here this morning with us. The guy that came from the oil field literally last, what, November? Uh, December. December, and now is making waves, especially people know him as the Gordon guy and the guy that made LSU women's basketball go viral with the Kim Mulkey videos. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, Taylor. How are you? I'm pumped. I'm excited to be here. You got an awesome setup, and I love what you're doing with everything, how you're actually doing what most people just only talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, hey, takes one to know one. Yeah. All right. Give us a little insight on who Taylor O'Brien is. Like, tell us. I want the story. I want where you came from, Ooh. like that moment. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was born in Morgan City, Ooh. Louisiana. Uh, and so I grew up in that area to about third grade, mm-hmm. went from there to Homa. And I've been in Homa, Louisiana for most of the time. And growing up, I, I always... I was always a little fella, so mm-hmm. I always had like something to prove, I guess. And I, I think that's where it comes from. Yeah. But throughout the course of time, I was, I was really athletic. I was really competitive. Always played sports, and my dad coached me in sports. So having my dad and in, in that aspect of developing through sports, I think is very crucial in how things turned out because that healthy competitiveness that was instilled with me yeah in the younger years definitely benefits me now I remember riding in the jeep to football games with my dad and he's got the music blaring and he's pumping me up because it was hard being so little but I was so fast and so you know you got gifts that you if you're around the right people they'll bring them out right and so growing up being mindful of my influence on who I was around and things like that. So I grew up, you know, South Louisiana around here. If you don't go to college, you go work in the oil field. Most yep. people go to college in the oil field too. Yeah. But, uh, I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to go to the army when I graduated. I didn't right. know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I ended up going to machine shops and that was how you get good money, put in the hours yep. and, it's it's a very difficult task to do. Uh, it's grueling. It's grinding. It's monotonous, and I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I I was working at a company. Ended up getting laid off 2015, and I didn't want to go make the same equivalent style of money in a shipyard. I was like, yeah. I'm not gonna break my back. So. I had a bright idea. I was like, man, I could drive a truck. Like I could be in the AC. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind doing that. And I went to like this driver school to get my CDL class A. And when I did that, I was in like a room full of 30 people. It felt like I was in high school again. Yeah. Just a bunch of clowns. Like, you know, just a totally different vibe vibe than I was used to. Yeah, you for know? sure. And I ended up, uh, I get a job right out of there. And I've been, I was there for seven years working in Port Fouchon. Yeah. And so that was seven days on where I would be stuck on location seven days off. So I drove the 18 wheeler. Fun fact, I couldn't back that thing up to save my life. No way. <laughs> no, I still can't really so back up. So what did up. you do? Uh, well, Fouchon is very truck driver friendly. So uh-huh. you can basically pull in there, spin around. Oh, good, good, and good. There was one time where they was like trying to get me to back up in between all these trucks. And I was like, I will stay here until all these trucks are gone. <laughs> I'm not backing back up, up nothing. <laughs> so it was cool. I did that for about two years till a position came open where I was like over the, the base. And so I was able to be the lead man of the crew. And yeah. that was a 24 hour job. With that job, I had a lot of downtime and I got tired of watching movies all the time. And I just felt. 
I was like, man, I'm just going to keep coming to this place and giving them a, a week of my life every other week. Yeah. Like, I just want something different. Right. So I, I found this guy on YouTube that was a fitness trainer. Yeah. And I was like, man, I could do this. I, I always was fit and active. So I ended up getting certified through NASM as a fitness trainer. Well, I had hit up a buddy of mine. I was like, look, man, I want to record some videos. The issue was it was too expensive for me. And I was like, damn, like, yeah, this expensive. Yeah. So uh, just learning on YouTube, filming myself, filming clients. And then I just fell in love with the camera. And from there, I would go to I'd put, just pull up somewhere and like, hey, man, you mind if I run the camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just giving away my work just because I didn't feel adequate enough yeah. of, man, is it, would somebody pay for this? Like, all right. I did was hit the shutter a few times and seeing the picture. Like, people yeah. are paying that that much money? For this, like, what? yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to get better. And, and whenever you start as a creative, it can be very constricting because you, you're just starting. So you don't recognize your art you don't recognize your talent your gifts because now it's to the point to where i could give a photo to someone and i think it's like i'm like crap i don't know and they're like oh my god like anything you make now is like unbelievable to people yeah. just because of their perception i feel like mm -hmm. of you so building that up takes time but also uh the imposter syndrome i think i've heard that before and with all that being said it, it comes down to the confidence that you have yeah and it's it's truly you against you and whenever you discover that things change so i want to go back a little bit when you picked up a camera how long ago was that give us just like some sort of a timeline i'd say maybe like two or three years two or three years yeah. and you just picked it up because you wanted to film and you had asked someone to film you and they quoted you and you were like hell no mm -hmm. i'm gonna do this shit myself yeah. so i was like penny pinching because i didn't really well, want to yeah. get into it i got this little sony zv1 it was just like a point and shoot but my photos wasn't looking like everybody else's so i'm like man what is going on yeah the trick was the lens you need yeah. to buy a camera that you could take a lens on and off because the lens is the magic. So the one I had, when you turned it on, it just came out and then went back in yeah. like, digitally. So that's where it was at. And uh, my client, Hunter Marcel, he filmed me with a Canon R6 and he showed me the video and I was like, Oh my God, what is this? <laughs> I said, I don't care what it costs. I'm going to get it. And then you, you're only as good as your tools, really. Yeah. So you have to invest in that. Yep. And people just get so caught up and hold back. I just want to get started. What's a budget camera for five hundred dollars? Dog, your iPhone costs more than five hundred dollars. Yeah. Like, spend the money. Yeah. You know, do a twelve month, no interest on on Amazon. Yeah. It's twenty twenty three. Yeah. It, it, just do it. So as people are listening, I want to clarify this. You started in the oil field. Mm -hmm. Obviously, did you go to the army or no? You just went no. straight into the, the shop. Okay. Yeah. Started in the oil field. Was like this life is not for me. I want something better. Uh -huh. Picked up a camera three years ago. Two three years ago. And now you are making videos mm -hmm. that are stupid. Yeah. And by stupid, I mean like good. Because yeah. I'm like, how does he do this? I love the one you had posted a reel or something. It's like what everybody sees and it's mm -hmm. like what I see. So it's just like a talent. It's like a hidden talent that you've had that you never knew you had until you took a chance and yeah. you bought a camera. Mm -hmm. Whether you didn't give a shit how expensive it was. Right. You were like, I'm going to do the damn thing. Yeah. And tell us, how did you get into where you are now? Like how, what was that? Cause I feel like we talked about this. So everybody listening, we did a TikTok live, what last week, the week before. Yeah. And he mentioned how, and I'm probably gonna get this story wrong, but you had did a video for someone and gave it to him. Was it a competitor of Gordon? And then you applied, give me that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Alabama game, I was, I had, we won in overtime and I was in the corner of the end zone yeah. where they caught the touchdown mm -hmm. and I had my GoPro attached to the top of my camera. So when they scored, everybody rushed the field. Well, when it happened, they had a little fella, uh, Lil Bill, and he had red hair and his job was to grab the pylons and take them so no one would take them as they stormed the field. Yeah. Because those pylons have cameras inside of them. So they're very expensive. So his job, grab it and, and get out of there yeah. <laughs> so he was right in front of the camera when it happened and he was like just this little fella he grabbed it and i mean tucked and ran and everyone <laughs> in the comments was like are we not going to talk about the pylon thief who just like ran in front of the camera and so what i did was uh 
everyone knew were like they were like he's an equipment manager that's what he does and i was like i don't know i think he really stole it uh-huh. so you just run a narrative uh-huh. and like they ran with it and like house of highlights posted at barstool like everywhere was posting it it even got put on by i think barstools but yeah. someone else claimed the video yeah and I, you know i wasn't worried about it everyone knew what was up but from there uh there was a lawyer who did a spinoff from the virality of it with yeah. my video and i was gonna hit him up hey look if you want to do more content like that was my video just let me know but I had interest in the other law firm within yeah. the area due to their activeness with helping out the athletes. Yeah. Cause I was, I'm big on athletes, student athlete opportunity and, and things like that. So I shot my shot and then they were like, Hey, look, we're, we're looking for a full-time position. I don't know if that's something you're interested in. And at the time where I was in my life, I, I was like, anything to get me out of here and from there i started in december and now we are staffing up he's got awesome analytics we just hired another uh production assistant so we got a full-time editor production assistant a whole marketing department and it's no small feat like he's like the third biggest marketing company in louisiana so he's got over 800 billboards like it's a full-time job yeah not only with him but with the athletes he manages Mm -hmm. so building that process being youtube trained is trial and error yeah and it it could be frustrating and i'm the type to where i I love productivity and Mm -hmm. if if i get stagnant i get or if I get disorganized, I get a little moody. But the guys in place that they have, he's got a team where his down to his COO is like having meetings with me every week to make sure like everything's on point, getting my mind right. Because yeah. I could I could be my worst enemy, right? But he's like, look, we'll lose some some ground in the beginning. Don't worry about that. We could stop posting and be okay. And I forget that because yes. I'm just like, ah. you're like grinding. Yeah, because I'm doing things on the side too. Yeah. But it's to the point now where I understand you got to pull back, build your foundation and mm-hmm. then take off. And then take off. Because I'm just so ready. Everyone wants to work with me and hire me and I want I want to do that. Yeah. But I also have to protect me from me. Yep. So that's where we're at with things. I want to back up one little second. You, I want everybody to make this clear. You were still working with the oil field. So you mm-hmm. were still driving trucks and on the sideline sure. grinding. Yeah. For free. For free. To build your resume. Yeah. And so what people look at you, I'm sure you've gotten this a lot that, well, you tell your story a lot. So people that mm-hmm. may be listening from my community may not know who you are. Right. Um, he didn't wake up and just fall into this awesome job. He didn't wake up and be a badass that he is. He didn't wake up and just like, be like, what is my life? He put in the work rep after rep and got as good as, as he is now to develop the career that he is, that he's in and that he wants to get. And that we've talked a lot and you're growing tremendously, mm-hmm. like insane amount. And I want to go back on something that you said a while ago and it's, when you were younger, the mindset you had, cause you were like, I was just a little guy, but I was fast mm-hmm. and I always had to develop a mindset. So has your mindset always had to be strong since you were little versus now? So do you find that you're really good at the imposter syndrome or, you know, your own worst critic now because you started at such a young age or is it something that still feeds you? That's a great question. I think it, it, instilled in me when I was younger because I was counted out so much being little that when I proved them wrong, I knew I was going to prove them wrong. So it was like a motivation that just was instilled. I remember walking with this guy and I was looking up. I mean, I was literally looking up to kids my age Yeah, and we were walking and he was running his mouth to me. It was a tournament. And I was like, we were saying something. I was like, yeah, I bet, I bet they, I'm faster or whatever. Right. Like, kids talking smack. And he's like, I know someone you can't beat. I'm like, who? He said, T.O. And I'm like, <laughs> T.O. On the Braves? Yeah. Number five? He's like, yeah. I said, that's me. And he looked at me and he stopped walking and I just kept walking. And it was like a moment for me that where like, like he thought I was just this imaginary figure. And he never up. knew me. He just heard of me. And I'm like, he's like two foot tall. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And like, I remember being a little boy and doing that. That's so, so cool though. Yeah, I know. And it stuck with me Yeah. because people create this image in their head of something, but you're a normal person yeah. and people forget 
you're normal. But it's the one that goes willing to take the risk yes. is the one that's always rewarded. No yeah. risk, no reward. Is, no. Is, you know, if you can't take the risk, you don't deserve the reward. Right. So growing up, I think knowing once I found my confidence and it's to the point to where now I understand, like I humbly understand how much I'm respected. I've gone places like just yesterday I was at the LSU baseball game. People just walk up to me and like, I love your work. Everywhere I go, people want to take pictures with me. Like you're like famous, bro. It's weird, bro. And I'm just and now like, you're on my podcast. What's yeah, up? people are like you're the guy from TikTok, and I just laugh because I'm just like, I guess so. I guess because yeah. you're normal. I'm normal. The people. This is the thing, though. I have another question that I want you to dig deep with. But yeah. this is the thing when you go viral on, or when you put your life out there. Like I am nowhere near viral like you, or have a following like you. But people are like, man, it looks like you're killing it. Always. Always. And I'm like, it. I'm still normal. I'm mm -hmm. still Shelby. I still have fears and doubts and imposter syndrome. And I still get nervous to get on video. And I still all these things. And they look at us in a different light completely because they're like, well, on camera, you look great. Like, right. you look like it's fine. Everything's fine. I'm like, but you worked your ass off to get where you are. Right. You knew in that moment, driving trucks, that you were like, I do not want to spend the rest of my life like this. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back. I want you to, because this podcast is for people that are really wanting to chase their dreams, but they're scared out of their mind to chase right. their dreams. And they don't really know that first step. And then sometimes they're like, oh, well, you just got lucky or you got whatever, you know, those mm -hmm. excuses. I want you to go back to that moment and like really dig deep and tell us like what you were feeling. Like when you realize like, I don't want to do this shit anymore. And then I want you to tell us what that feeling felt like when you were able to tell one of your crew members that you put on TikTok mm -hmm. that I'm leaving, man. Like it's sad I'm leaving, but how did you feel in that moment that you got to walk out of that those doors. Man. And you didn't have to worry about backing up an 18-wheeler ever again in your life. Yeah, because I'm not good at that. <laughs> uh, I think what did it for me was seeing how many people are living a life that is they're enjoying. And I'm just like, how did they do that? How do they pay their bills? I mean, I'm not even charging for what I do. How can I get to that point? Yeah. But what was happening was I was going home every seven days and I knew almost halfway through the, that time off that I, I gotta go back. And I hated that, I hated leaving. And I was like, there's gotta be, I gotta figure this out. So I was trying to fit and strain and I was yeah. trying to figure out a way to get out of Fouchon. And through that, I was not aware to what was going on in my relationship and that, in turn made me aware of things to where it's like, you're always trying to get to the next thing. And whenever I get to this point, then I'll be ready. And then I'll be planned out. It don't work like it that. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Cause time keeps moving. Yeah. So you're so focused and you're not present and you're not aware. And you think once you get to this point, everything will be peaceful. But as humans, we always going to be reaching for that next point. So, I ended up happening. Uh, we I ended up moving to the Houston area and the Woodlands. And I had to end up leaving the Woodlands like a year later. And whenever that happened and I, I, I moved, I left my home, separated with, with my wife. That was a moment for me to where I thought I had time to figure this out. And that time ran out. And when that ran out, I realized how short life was. And I was going to Fouchon. I've been there seven years. I'm driving a truck around yeah. people who are just not in the same mind frame as me. Right. I'm full of dust. I'm full of grease, sweating, smell like sunscreen and sunscreen's on my neck and dust is getting stuck. Like, yeah, it's I'm just not the tired life. of this. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it made me come to a realization like, if I would, if I would go tomorrow, like my last dying thoughts and I keep a, I learned this from Gary V. It's such a healthy mind frame to think about if a loved one would pass today or tomorrow, or if you would. Yeah. And I know it's kind of different and people are like, yeah, I understand that. But like, you got to think about your future and all this and that, but you have to be very respectfully present with how life moves. Uh, just yesterday, someone else passed that I knew. So it's like, this shit is short. Yeah. And if you don't 
take drastic action, you will stay in your mundane nine to five. And if you're not doing something that makes you feel alive, like life's too short to be doing anything else. I think too, um, well, being an entrepreneur in general or going out on your own is scary as hell, like Mm -hmm. straight up because you could lose it all tomorrow. So for, I mean, I can't say that I still don't think about this two years in, but like in the beginning, I was like, holy crap, I'm going to wake up. I lived in fear that I was going to lose everything tomorrow. Yeah. Until recently, I heard a podcast and it really resonated with me. And they said, "Would what is, first off, what is the worst case scenario? Mm-hmm. So like, what if you lost it all? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you would be confident at this point that you could go get another job, mm-hmm. that you could go back to driving trucks if you had to. Mm-hmm. Are you comfortable enough burning it to the ground to start over? And if your answer is yes, then why are you not taking that risk? Right. Then why are you not going to live a better life for yourself, for your family? Because like you said, life is so damn short. Mm-hmm. And so if, as you're listening to this, the, these are two people that are sitting across from each other that left the oil and gas industry that knew that they were, you know, meant for more and better. And just looking at you now in person, you do feel famous, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I'm proud that you chase your dreams. And I'm proud of everyone that like really reaches out mm-hmm. and chases. You picked up a camera two years ago. Now look at what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, shit, you put LSU women on the map. I'm kidding a little <laughs> bit, but not really. If you don't know, y'all, he has a 90 million view TikTok of Kim Mulkey. Yeah, it's something that just, it's just like you were saying, how when people you see in public, they're like, it looks like you got it going yes. on. And and everyone, my buddy Jordan Arsema, he's mm-hmm. at Works for LSU. He's the, he's the same way. He says he'll go places. And because like I do his content and yeah. I've always got him in front of the camera, he's like, dog, it's like people just, they own their phone like this. And if they're consuming, they only seeing producers. So you're producing, they're going to think you're just on. Yeah. So you literally can create any narrative about you with social media. Yes. And that's the power of yes. everything. So with the women's basketball, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do with women's basketball. But see, I was so fascinated. I've never seen women compete. And so when I was on the court, like I've grown up playing sports my whole life. But watching these women, like talk smack to each other and aggressive. I'm like, I was fascinated. Yes. I'm like, these girls going hard. Like <laughs> they some, they some ballers. And then it really felt like a special team. Like, I don't know if it just felt different. And I'm just like recording them. And I'm like, man, these guys are just really good. Like yeah. this is like a movie good. Yeah. And turns out they were the best. Obviously. So, and, and having Kim Mulkey on the camera, she reminds me of my grandma. And okay. so that's what I've figured out through. I couldn't figure out like, yeah. what was it about her? Just her class, her, her, her dominance, that feminine, just strength. It's like, yeah. I always respected and, that. And she dresses like a boss. Yeah. Like a boss. So like literally you, what made you capture the outfit so much? Like, I don't, I don't even honestly think in your mind and correct me if I'm wrong. I had wrong, no idea. It wasn't the outfit. You no. were like, I love her energy. Yeah. I love. I feel like I can make some badass videos of this because yeah. people need to know who Kim Mulkey is. I mean, I grew up. I played basketball, so mm-hmm. I've known who Kim Mulkey is forever. Mm-hmm. And so I always was like, before I burned out and quit, yeah. I was like, I want to go play for her one day. So I've always known. So now that she's at LSU, and then I saw you making videos, I was like. Holy shit. And then I, I'm like, girl, I love your outfits. Like you are getting up, picking that and like, let's get it. Yeah. I didn't know who she was. I never knew who she was. I was at the game. I didn't really know who she was. I seen her with the hair. I was like, that's, I guess that's the coach. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched her a few times, just freak the freak out. And I'm yeah. like, what? What is, what is going happening? on? Yes. I was like, that's wild. They just <laughs> let her do that. And uh, a few times I yeah. seen her just go nuts. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right. So we're doing our filming her. And the one that's at 26, 24, 24 million, she was where she just like went on the court and just stomped it out. And I was just watching her and just holding the shot. And the photographers next to me, they're like, yeah, look, look, this is what I got. And I was like, look at this shit. <laughs> you know, like I showed on no, the look, video no, look, look what I because I record in slow motion. Yeah. Everything I record isn't basically slow motion when it comes to sports and I'll just overlay a song. So it plays back in slow motion. So it's just already butter. So it was just from there. I just kept showing up, kept doing it and posting. And I just didn't realize what was going on. But and when I started overnight. it, yeah, overnight, did you just wake up and you were like, holy shit? 
Now yeah, I found well, it, it. It was running and I was like, I know what to do now. Yeah. But basically what happened was I had a, a, a small following. I had got 4 million views on a video of me leaving my job. And that got me to like 30,000 on TikTok. But with the Kim stuff, it was just everywhere you look. Yeah. And then now we're at 151 or something. So it's safe to say, what did social media do for your journey? It time stamped it. And it allows others to see that this is possible for anybody. You right. just have to document. And that's where people get caught up. They're like, I don't know how to content create. Yes. I don't know how to, I'm not creative like you. Like, bro, there, there is people out there. There's one in the area. I'm sure you know Georgia Beth. Uh, maybe, I don't know. She she records from her phone. Yeah. She lost a bunch of weight and has a huge following. And she posts. She's, she's a, Yeah, she's like a mother of three. And she'll just record herself and just talk to the camera, be authentic, just like you do. And people respect that because they only see you in front of the camera. They forget you you got other struggles too. Because yeah. we got to put that aside and make sure we're showing up. Yeah. So you're that same person. Anybody listening, like you, you're that too. You just have to put time aside. We're all busy. We're never going to have time. It's never going to be the right time. And you just have to get started. And it, you, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you Not just said, all. okay, so he's a videographer, like straight up. I don't know if you like to be called that. Some of my videographer friends like to be he's called enough. like video production um, people, it's whatever. cinematographers, yeah. all of it. Camera guy. I know. Camera guy. Yeah. And he's pretty baller at it. But like, a phone does just that. And it's like, well, maybe not that level, mm -hmm. but documenting is creating. Yeah. If it's not authentic in this day and time, it ain't going nowhere. No. If you're not willing to be real with your audience and actually build genuine trust with your community, then you are really doing yourself a disservice mm -hmm. and everyone else. Because just like you said, you are writing the narrative for everyone else to understand who you are. Right. It's the power of marketing. And now it's the power of social media. Mm -hmm. You tell people, what you believe in your values and your mission and everything like that. And I, what I love about you is I found, I was scrolling obviously yesterday to prepare for this uh, podcast, but I've seen it before is that timestamp video that you're like, I will be on the sidelines. I don't remember exactly what you said. You had a mullet. I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. That's him. And then, then it goes six months later and you're like, boom, I'm here. And the thing is what, what I love so much about the fact that you've documented everything is people can see it didn't just happen overnight. Yeah. Cool. Kim Mulkey's video went viral overnight. Awesome. But like you haven't, you didn't just pick up a camera that day and say, let me film her. And then boom, you went viral overnight. Like this is a process. And if you scroll back, you'll see it. You, did you start filming in high, like, what was the football? Was that high school football or when you went back and I don't know, I like literally went deep dive uh -huh. before you did LSU, unless they were just like scrimmaging. I went to high schools. Like I would go practice at the high school games okay, on yes. Friday night so I could be ready for LSU games on Saturday. So I would just pull up and like just record the kids, yeah. get them some exposure. And that's kind of how it started with the LSU track because there was a high school camp at LSU and I just showed up with my camera because I love football and there was dads out there recording their sons with their phones 50 yards away. And I'm like, hey bro, like, which one, which one you trying to get? And he's like, that's my boy right there. I was like, all right, just walk away and then like go get a fire shot of him. And I come back, I'm like, hey, check it out. He's like, holy moly, you Can know? Can I have that? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, bro, just, what I was doing was I was building my name and I said, look, message me on Instagram. And what happens? They gonna follow you. Yeah. So I was just going around getting followers that's yeah. really what i was doing i was exchanging value for i'm not charging you you know you just go follow me and i'll send it to you i'll send you the clip these kids are having big followings so you might not get the upfront money value and that's where people mess up oh how much you charge for that it's not about that it's about the relationship because when it comes to business and everything communication and relationships is the most important part you might not get the money up front, but it's not about that. Because if you build a relationship, you're going to get a matter. check for life. Yeah. And that's where people fall short. They so caught up on that dollar Quick amount. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. You go work for free and you go provide and give, and it's going to come back if you have pure intentions. And I want to make it very, very clear on what he's saying here is he had a full-time job. Right. He didn't just quit and then go work for free. Like people expect you to be able to just 
get that quick money mm -hmm. and they want the life that you live now, yeah. but they didn't really respect the life that you had to live to mm -hmm. get to now. And so that's what obviously social media also does is you're getting a preview of someone's life. You right. don't know their struggles, their anything that they're going through, whether they're successful or not. Like the other day, I'm going to call you out on this one Do it. is the story you put up. I have hella respect for you now is you were crying mm -hmm. and you put that up and you were like, dude, I'm successful and I've made it to the point when, I mean, I'm sure you have goals and sure. aspirations to be bigger than you are now, but it ain't easy. No. This shit is not easy. And especially living a life on social media. Cause I'm sure every comment, every DM is not nice. Like mm -hmm. I'm sure you get hate. I don't know. Maybe not, but some people get a lot of hate to the point where we now have to train our minds to deal with that. And to be like, I am good at my job. I do not have to be perfect. And so when I saw that video of you, I was like, all right, this is my dude because <laughs> he's vulnerable too, because I make sure that I show the, sh the shit that nobody else shows right. because I'm not living to be viral. Mm -hmm. I'm not living to have a huge following. If I get there, awesome. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of wants that. But in the sense of, I want to build a community, just like you said, that knows me and likes me and trusts me that no matter what, mm -hmm. they're going to buy from me forever. They're yeah. going to cheer me on forever. So it's not the now, it's the future of what that community is going to do for you. And I think that when people look at you and they see you a badass on the sidelines of LSU, because I mean, LSU is awesome too. And then you got women's basketball and now you're there and now you're in the NIL with, uh, with Gordon doing all these things. People are like, I want to live his life, but guess what y'all? He shot his shot. He did the shit for free. Mm -hmm. He reached out to Gordon. And he said, do you need help? I am here to help you. And so that's the, the difference between people listening, wanting to chase their dreams. And then the people that are actually chasing their dreams that they're okay with no. So what were you going to do in your mind? Okay. First off, let's back up. When you shot your shot with Gordon, did you think it was going to be a yes? True statement. I had no idea. I just shoot. I mean, I've done that to multiple people where I'll just shoot them a message. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, you know, I got a good boost of energy. Yeah, you're I like, just, I'm doing it. Hey, what's up? Like, <laughs> and then whatever <laughs> happens, happens. And if it don't happen, it's not meant for me because that's where I'm at with life and everything that I've been through is that if you try and force something or if you stress about outcomes and situations, you really got no control over yes. it. So it's going to happen how it's supposed to happen. And if it don't happen, then that wasn't for me. That wasn't the route I was supposed to go. But that takes so long to develop in the sense of, you know, carving out your journey. Like you were saying, I had a full-time job, so I wasn't worried about payment on a, on a camera. Most people, I feel like, think they need to just quit their job and go all in. I, I'm i different in that aspect. I know a lot of people say, you just go all in, and I, I get that. And that works for some people, but for those who have families and kids, you can't do that. But guess what? You can't be tired and say you don't have time when you're on your phone and you're scrolling, watching Netflix and eating Cheetos when you get off. You got to save some time for you. If you could, if you got a nine to five or most people don't really have a nine to five, they got like a seven to seven in, in the oil field. It's, it's grueling. But guess what? If you got the chance, listen to a podcast, listen to a YouTube video while you're working. Take time within your day to be productive until you get to the point of breaking away but you got to put in work it's going to be long hours it's going to be long nights and it's not going to be easy but it's going to be worth it and then you're able to talk about this and that journey because i mean i just can't believe like i'm daily i just take it in and like i could i could break down in tears at any moment just because i know how much it took to be where i am and how much people respect it and give hope. Like you get messages, like I've got 92 message requests right now from people who are just like asking me camera questions, telling me how I inspired them. And like, I used to be, I'm a big Gary Vee fan. So like I was replying to everything. And then now it's to the point to where I, there's no way I can keep up. And even phone calls and messages, I ha I'm like missing calls. And t it's just, I have no bandwidth left because at the end of the day, I'll get on social media, I'll post, and then I'll get off. I might scroll a little bit, but, like, I don't really scroll until, like, 2 o'clock, 3 in the morning when I'm, like, laying in bed finally. <laughs> so it's like... When you should be sleeping. I don't turn <laughs> off. Yeah. So that can become unhealthy. That can become... A, you can burn out from that. And that's where you have to be aware of things because it's not all going to happen overnight. Being 
being procrastinating is productive. Being restful is productive. So understanding the way that you think about not being productive is is critical. And when it comes to creating and being a creative in your progress, sometimes you got to pull back in order to go further. So the only time I, I say all gas, no brakes is what people say. Like, dude, you're just wide open. And sometimes I'll slow down. Like this week, I wasn't on live all week and I'm getting messages They're like, where you at? You know, some people, they get it. They're like, you just got to you just need to take a break, take a break sometimes because you just you're wired. You're like, what's the next thing? What's the next video? That video is good. OK, cool, cool. It just don't stop. It doesn't stop. So you just got to be mindful of things and, and really plan better. And I feel like that's the key to balancing it all. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you said that you take us take a second to just soak it all in because mm -hmm. I mean, if you thought of yourself what even 2 years ago, shit, a year ago, would you imagine you were here? No. Nah, no. No. I mean, I always in my head I always was a positive person because when I, in my younger years, you know, we all go through those times where yeah. you, that stage where you just you see no way out. And I grew up very in a religious household, so I felt held back and that was just my thinking on things, but you forget how temporary life is. If you're in a bad situation or you're in a rough patch in life, if you lost somebody, you feel like that's eternal and it's never going to end. But life teaches you that both the bad times and the good times, like it goes to extremes all the time. If it's going bad, it's going to change. And if it's going good, it won't, it won't always be good. And right. just last, you know, a couple months ago, I was with two different people and both of those people are not here. Like they're gone off the earth. And it's like, damn, I was just with them last week. And when you comprehend the fr the fret, we're just so distracted yeah. and we forget how real life is and how quick it could change. So if you're that miserable and you hate your job, then... I mean, if, if you're going to go down like that, then that's on you. You don't you don't deserve the reward if you're not right. going to take the risk. And I and I say this a lot. You get one life. You get one. You get to make that choice. Mm. And a lot of people say, well, I can't do that because financially I have kids and I'm married. Well, hey, I have kids and mm -hmm. I'm married. But I'm, I brought a damn spreadsheet to my husband because I was like, I am miserable. Mm -hmm. I am matching my salary. We are leaving. Like, mm -hmm. I want to leave. I want to take this risk. If it fails, I can go back to corporate. Yeah. Not what I want to do. Or I can build another business. Like, cool. The thing is like, I will listen to your story. I will cheer you on. I will talk you through a solution of how you can get out of it. But mm -hmm. if you don't make the only person that can change your life is you. And if you don't take the chance to change your life, then at that point you're just making excuses right. and I have no more time to listen to it. Yeah. If you're going to pour in, I'm sure you've experienced this. When, when someone asks you for advice, you give them everything. all oh, you don't hold back. Yeah. And when you watch them waste potential, you're not going to waste your energy on them anymore. Absolutely not. I'll help you and I'll give you all the clues as much as I can. But if you're going to show me that you, you still meet the same people from high school saying they won't start a podcast that they've been saying since high school. Yeah. And I don't have time because I, I've got things to do. So keeping the your surroundings, mm. protecting your energy and a lot being picky on who you allow around you. Don't don't matter if they family or what. If they taken away from you, get rid of them. Thank you for saying. I was like going to ask you that question. Go like ahead. you can you can be cordial, you can see them on the holidays, but if they if they bring any amount of stress on you or if there's some kind of friction or resistance, yeah. like you need all like I need all my energy throughout the day just for myself to keep myself right cuz I'm beating myself up in my head all day. So I can't have nothing else taken away from me. I need all this energy for me. Right, right. And yeah. if if you're going to take away or stress me out, like right now I had I had my mom set up my internet and it's 130 bucks a month. I'm like, "What the hell?" Like, and I don't have time to call them and I'm stressing about it, but you know what? I'll just pay the 130 bucks cuz I ain't got time to to handle it i ain't got yeah. time to stress I, i'll leave a light on and some of my buddies they so old school they like bro i mean what you pay the electricity bill or something and it's like dog if if, if you pinching pennies that tight you're stressing too much yeah so it's like those small things where that homegrown mindset is like penny pinch save money coupon 
like that scarcity mindset, just know all the money in your bank, you might never spend that. You know, we might have a little bit saved up or a lot saved up or nothing saved up. But just know you're going to be all right as the day goes on if you leave a light on for a few seconds. No need to get in an argument with your spouse or somebody about it. It's those small things that pick at us that we don't realize add up. So don't sweat like small shit. Don't worry about the lights being left on. Don't worry about driving two extra miles for 10 cent cheaper gas. Yeah. You're never going to spend all the money you you got in your account. Like, stop stressing. Buy yeah. the damn pizza buy the extra dipping sauce if you want like people are just so tight and it stresses them and they don't realize subconsciously that resistance and friction so those small things get rid of that especially in today's world like you have so many opportunities to build such a badass life that I remember leaving corporate and people were like, what do you mean you're going to be a social media manager? Mm -hmm. Like, is that even a job? Are you going to make money? And the more it is because one, Louisiana is just way behind on yeah. every other state. And it, the amount of money that you can make online now, and you don't have to be trapped mm -hmm. in corporate. You don't, if you want to be in corporate, cool. That's awesome. Climb that ladder. But I want you to succeed in corporate. Like mm -hmm. you want to like, be a boss and go. But if you want to get out of that life and you want to make money and you have passion to do something else, then go do it. And mm -hmm. the amount of money that you can make is insane because that is where the world is shifting. Yeah. And I want to change just a little bit here because I want your uh, insight on this. How we're, we're making a real left turn Let's here. Go. Hard. How excited were you to meet Kevin Gates? Oh man, I didn't, I didn't meet Kevin Gates, but like, <laughs> here's what happened. I hit up his, here's how I got into okay, Kevin me, Gates. So Kevin Gates, one of my favorite rappers I grew up, he's if from you, Baton Rouge. If, we, if they follow you, we know. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows. <laughs> but growing up, Kevin Gates and I have like a similar story. Like, okay. and I grew up listening to his music in high school. So like his savage stage with dreads, like I, I felt that, you know, his, did you have dreads? No, I didn't have dreads, actually. Okay. No, Kidding. I had, like, Keep spike going. bangs and stuff. <laughs> spike bangs. Yeah, yeah, it. totally anomaly. But the hood loves me, so it's all good. Okay. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so what happened was with Gates is I hit up his photographer. And Ooh, I said, nice. his name's Jerome. Shout out. I said, look, man, next time y'all in Baton Rouge, let me know. I'll come get some behind-the-scenes photos of you. And I offered value to Shut him. Oh. So when you offer value to somebody and saying, hey, bro, can you get me in the Gates concert to take photos of Kevin Gates? You coming off as a threat if you if you would approach like that. So I said, hey, I'll come in there and get behind the scenes shots of you. So I'm coming for you. Yes. So he loved that. And he's like, man, uh, yeah, let me know when it's closer. Well, I didn't hear from him. I didn't hear from him. And then he was like, I got you, I got you. But I'm a strong communicator and I got to be reassured multiple times. And he wasn't doing that. So here it is, day of the show. I'm still can't get in contact with him. He calls me 10 minutes before the show. Where you at? You in line? I'm like, dog, I ain't even left my house. I didn't even know. He was like, oh man, Gates is coming. I was going to get you in. I was like, shit, I bought two tickets in case I couldn't find him. I spent like the money to be at the Gates concert. He's like, knew. yeah. He's like, well, let me know when you get here. I'm like, damn, so I'm rushing. Get to the concert. He's back there with Gates. He can't get me. The show's about to start, and I'm in the crowd. Like, I'm like, damn. I'm telling every artist I see, go back. Like, hey, tell Jerome I'm here. Tell Jerome I'm here. My camera's in the car because, you know, I can't bring, you it, bring in. it in. I was going to ask you yeah. bring it in. No, it's in the car. And so finally, I see him. He's never seen me. And like, we lock each other. And I walk up to the barricade, and everyone is like looking at me. And I grab this little pass and I turn around and everybody is looking at me like who is this little dude you know <laughs> so I just like take off running to like my car to get my camera and oh run my back God. when is... I ran back I found one of my buddies from Morgan City and he's like bro he was like I've been telling my wife I know you she don't believe me <laughs> <laughs> so I was like where's she at and then she walks up she's like this the TikTok guy I'm like oh lord the TikTok guy. so what happened was I got my camera I went right behind the barricades and like I look at the crowd and everyone's just, you know, looking at you going nuts and then getting ready for Gates. And then when Gates came out, man, he just stood like right over me and I'm just looking up like this shit's crazy. You know, like, and, God, I've never would have thought my life would be like this. And you know what? 
I'm literally in the front row. Yeah. Because I I have a camera. Like you can spend three to four thousand dollars, have a camera, and get VIP access everywhere you go. But you did it the right way. Yeah. You you contacted the photographer, yeah. which is actually genius because in all reality, like sometimes the people behind the camera that's getting the footage of that person mm -hmm. isn't seen, doesn't no. get credit, doesn't like nobody knows who it is. No, no. And so the fact that you are willing to go get footage of that person, I'd be like, hell yeah. Yeah. Anytime I'm I'm somewhere, I'm always taking photos of the photographers because they are usually at multiple events and you go up to them and you say, hey, here you go. And they're like, what? what? Now you got a partner for life because. And then they're going to always know who you are. And then they get shot. They have to respect you. for you. Yeah. For it's sure. a value exchange. If you can't be used, you're useless. Yeah. So that's you just got to be of value. And it's not about selling people or, or anything. It's about helping. And yes. that's where people mess up. They're like, oh, you know, how do I do this? How You just. How can you help them? How can not you just sell be them. a human? Yeah, because people pick up on that sales stuff. Yeah. You just be real. And it's like, hey, look, if I'm not for you, I'll recommend you to somebody who is. Yeah. If you can't afford this, then I understand. Maybe I could help you find someone more in your range. Yeah. Because you have to, like I even had this discussion with you and really finding your audience and learning how to price in things or what do I charge for this or that. There's no solid set price point for anything you offer this is a whole new field but it's 2023 and in 2023 you can learn anything on youtube for free there's no reason why you can't do what you want to do and learn it for free right you can buy a course and it could expedite you i'm i'm totally big i don't have a i'm not coming with a, a hidden course but i've paid for sales coaching and it was the reason why i could sell a 1200 90 day program compared to a 40 dollar a month program yeah it's all about presentation offering value and people connecting with you because once they're bought into you they'll buy anything you put out and yeah. it's to the point where they're like man do how can i support you do you have merch do you have this do you have that and i'm just like dog i ain't got time to make that right now yeah <laughs> you should <laughs> we'll you should get make there. some time yeah. to do that because they're gonna buy it no I, I love that you brought that up but i i'll say this one piece of advice on um, the podcast for people that are listening. I've told Taylor this, like you're now at a threshold, you name your price. And that's not arrogant. That's not cocky. You are that good. And you are that good at people, like people wanting to work with you. And so you want to, to meet that threshold. So you aren't, you have, like you just said, you have to protect your energy. You have to protect your mindset. So when you set that threshold, those people now have a goal to get there. Mm -hmm. I want to hire Taylor. I want to work with him. So you have now developed a FOMO feeling for everyone because they want to work with you. And when you set that price at the value that you are now, not the Taylor that started, the one right now, that is a whole new level of respect that you're going to gain that people, some people are gonna be like, wow, he's so expensive. Okay. Well, look at what I've done. Mm -hmm. Look at the product that you're going to get, the deliverables you're going to get, the time I'm going to spend like building this relationship, giving you good product back for you to give to your consumer. It's worth every damn penny. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that we've had that discussion because I'm going to push you and I'm going to be like, you deserve to to price that way more because your time is valuable. Look at what you've done. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. In a good way. If people don't right. know that word. I will say this. Okay. I mean, I will ask this question. Do you wish you would have started sooner? Like, is there any regret that you waited so late? In all honesty. It happened how it was supposed to happen. Because if I'd have started sooner, my mind frame wouldn't have been there. I wouldn't have had the motivation back in me. And you, it's always easy to say what you could have did yep. or could have didn't. Yeah. But the, the timing of everything happened how it was supposed to. And it's poetic. The things that have happened in my life, I feel, were placed there in the sense of the timing of everything. Because if certain things happen when at the wrong time then you won't benefit from it you have to go through some tough shit in order to see if you're ready for that next level yeah. and so if you look at everything like a test like you're always being tested i say from the universe because a lot of people are turned off whenever you talk about ho holy roly stuff so i try and keep it very generalized based in order to get that message to people who shut down for certain keywords if you follow me I got so you. 
I see it as I'm being tested all the time by the universe. And if I pass that test and if I hold true, then another level is unlocked and I'm allowed into the next stage. So that's how you really got to look at life. You almost, people might say you have to be realistic or they do, try and down that mindset and that, that fictitious thinking to some. But if you really believe that, then it's not fictitious. And that's truly how you get through life. Because I'm, I'm a firm believer in like the magnetic stuff and what you attract, your energy, your frequency, we're all energy. That's a whole nother topic. But at the same time, knowing that you, your vibe, I try and set the vibe when I go places. If someone's in a bad mood or someone's negative in a room I'm in, I will either leave the room or like, like what's wrong? Like I'm going to break that tension because I can't be around any stress. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I'm either going to overpower that vibe or I'm going to leave because I have to just be so cautious of what I keep around me. I, I don't ever allow people around me to say they're tired. I'd be like, man, I'm tired. I'm like, I don't want to hear that because you'll believe it. You'll believe you're tired. You'll start shutting down. You'll get vegetative. Like, your words are, are, are just everything. They're powerful. Yeah. So I'm a big proponent in in the sense of what you tell yourself and who you keep around you. And that's the most important thing when it comes to building. You you might not have a bunch of friends and that's okay. You get one or two solid cats on the same wavelength as you, man, you could be unstoppable. Wow, you are a Gary V fan. I love it. I, yeah. I feel like I'm literally having a conversation with him, even though whatever. Nice. The thing is, you said circles is okay to get smaller. Like oh, yeah. do not, and this is what I've learned. And like, I always was a people, I was always a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want everyone to love me, which is yeah. very exhausting and tiring. Yeah. Now I'm like, mm -hmm. and this doesn't sound bad when it's, when I say this out loud, <laughs> but I got enough friends and I only <laughs> want the friends that are going to tell me the real shit. Like yeah. if I send them content, I'm like, give me real constructive criticism. They love me. Mm -hmm. They believe in what I'm doing, but they're going to tell me let's re-record it. That looks like shit. You're doing great. That could have been a, a client that you lost because another opportunity is coming. You want people like that, that cheer you on and that are there for you, good, bad, and ugly that aren't just there because now you're famous yeah. or aren't there now just because you're chasing your dreams. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or that's just negative. That's like, Oh, I can't believe you made that risk. Are you not scared that it's going to like fail tomorrow? Like, so yeah. the fact that you brought that up about it's okay yeah. for your circle to get smaller. It doesn't mean you aren't liked. It's it's it just means you're simply protecting your freaking energy. Yeah. And in this world today, in the world of social media, that's huge. Yeah. We forget that even though we're good people, you forget that other people aren't you. Mm -hmm. And you look you you just expect people to be you and have a good intention like you and they don't. They they have their own agenda and that's fine. Everybody's trying to protect themselves and everyone's always so instant and hurt by others that they just throw you into that batch. But you have to remember that you are different and as crazy as that sounds, once you truly and fully believe like you you're different, it's it changes the game because I forget, like you say, you keep saying I'm famous and like, I'll go to a store and people like go crazy and I forget, like, I'm just trying to well, that's look good. for the damn bread, you know, you give me but, the bread. Like, <laughs> but at the same time, a healthy and humble relationship of knowing like you really that dude, like you have to have a sense of, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. And you can brag to your, your, your family and they, they'd be okay because it's not bragging. It's appreciating your work. And I think people are so scared to pat themselves on the back publicly because they like, I don't want people to think I'm bragging. Like, nah, dog, you did that. Like show them it's okay to be your own cheerleader yes. in the sense of being humble about it. You don't have, I feel like every time before we say something good, we're like, all right, look, I mean this humbly, but just say it. Yeah. Just Rip say it. Like you, you did it and you really him. And now that confidence follows me to where when I walk in places, I, I understand like someone might know me here. So like, I can't be popping off. You know yeah. what I mean? So well, it's I like, just learned what that word meant. So yeah. at least I'm there with you. But I will say this. Um, last November, I put on an event here for free, social media. And I was hella nervous. Yeah. And I called my dad and I was like, dad, if you give me one piece of advice, what would it be? And he goes, to make sure you cheer yourself on. Because awesome. if you don't, how do you expect others to? Yeah. And so that was like a huge turning point for me. So like, I'm glad you just said that because 
it's not bragging, mm-hmm. but it kind of is in the same sense. But you did the damn thing. Yeah. You put in the work. You now are where you are because you had long hours. You were up late, up early, grinding. You ain't got time to be tired. You're protecting your energy. Now look at you. Mm-hmm. And so it is okay to cheer yourself on. It's okay to say, I did that. Mm-hmm. I am here. Yep. That is okay. Yeah. And so you don't need to make excuses before you're like, I'm a badass and right. I'm awesome at what I do. Now I'm sharing it with the world. I'm still humble. I'm still me, but mm-hmm. I can still be proud of me. Yeah. And if somebody's got something to say about that, then just look at where it's coming from. We we will bypass all 100 compliments and focus on one, one negative, negative compliment. That's why your face did a weird face when I said, I'm sure you get negative comments. And yeah. you, messages you were like, nah, dude. I mean, I just block and erase. It's that easy. People are like, well, if I block it, then it's showing that maybe, uh, man, shut up. There's a million, there's a billion people in this world. You could do it without them. Block, delete. You ain't getting my energy. I love it. Cause like, if you go back and watch this video and that moment I said that your face was like, I was like, okay, he doesn't get negative comments. He's just a positive. Per- you know what? It's fine. I'm I glad get negative comments it. about Kim. Kim gets all the negative comments, but it's not ever really targeted at me. I mean, I might, they might say something, how I talk or whatever, but it's like, is he sounds like the water boy or something. You know, I'm like, it's whatever. You're like, but whatever, thanks. I'll go in on myself, though. I'll go make fun of myself and take all the wind out their sails. So now what you going to say? All yeah. right, I got a big head. What? Now what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you, if you can joke with yourself, then... You win. Yeah, you take all their power. Now what you going to get me with? Yeah. No, next, all right? That's all you got? Yeah. All right, keep keep scrolling. Go Bye. watch somebody else shit. You know, like, like I feel sorry for you. I yeah. think that's actually what Gary Vee says. Have empathy for your yeah. haters. And when it comes to, this is something I really enjoy. Um, that, that fitness trainer that I follow, Wes Watson, he did 10 years in prison and he's very aggressive. Not a lot of people can really follow with him, but the way he speaks is strong and it, it, it reached me. But he was saying how when it comes to explanations, he said, your friends won't need them and your enemies won't believe them. So you don't have to explain good. yourself That's a good to way anybody. To, yes. You know, and if somebody has a has a bone to pick or they want to tell you about yourself, man, look, if that's how you feel, that's fine. But Bye. I'm good, you know, so. Well, cool. As we wrap up, I have one good question left for you. You got some good stuff. I, I like know. your questions. Duh. <laughs> I did my homework. Mm-hmm. I'm like, the Taylor Technique is here. Duh. Well, That's it's not funny. the, it's just That's at funny. Taylor Technique, whatever. That'll be in the show notes. Okay, I want a good answer here. So don't don't back down. Don't be nervous. It's nothing I'm not nervous. off limits. Um, if you could go back and tell young Taylor one thing in life, one, mm-hmm. what would it be? Uh, that's a you could take one. a minute. If I could go back and tell And I want the goodness. Yeah. I say, look, bro, everything that you're thinking about is possible. It's better. Like, it's real. Like, your imagination is real. And and you're not making it up. And it really is really going to happen exactly how you're thinking. Because... We just live in our heads all day and we're like, man, that would be so awesome if this happened or that happened. But it's actually better than you thought if you put in the work, if you just don't stop, if you don't let go, if you keep that mindset of people like, how you balance everything? There ain't no balance. There's no such thing as balance. You're either all in or, or you just, you're growing or you're dying. And at times going to come where you're going to lay your head down and take your last few breaths and just imagine what's going to rush through your head as you go. And I know that I'll be able to say I did everything within my power to just give it all I got cuz that's times times ticking. Everyone's like asking me, I just say I'd ask it worked about my 401k. I said, "Dog, I ain't even going to be here in time for 401k. I got stuff to do. I'm not worried about that. It's too far away. Like, I'm here for now and whatever comes it's what's supposed to happen. So living in the moment and being positive and helping others along the way. Wow. All right. That was deep. That Shit. was deep. I love it. I did all of them like that. Yeah. So it's not. That was <laughs> and good. And nobody knows it's coming because it hasn't launched yet. That's awesome. Wow. This was a great podcast. This was fun. I actually love it. I'm going to toot our own horn that this was good. <laughs> this I mean, was I'm great. sure you've been on better ones, whatever. No, no. This was fun. They're all different. They're yeah. all different. And that that's when it comes to like, 
with your work or like your style or other photographers are like, I'm not as good as you. No, you different. This is art, not science. So everybody's in their own lane. No one's in competition. That's just them. That's their style. That's, That's their you. art. Yeah. That's who you so are. this was different. I love this well, good. this angle, this energy. You're a different energy, and I, I think you got a great thing going. I love this setup, and I love like how you just got the ball rolling. We just going. You just got to start. You just got to start. And everything else going. Well, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. How can people find you? Obviously, they've probably already found you, but let's tell them again. Yeah. Uh, at Tailored Technique. T A I L O R E D. Uh, technique at on Instagram and then on TikTok is tailored underscore technique and YouTube's tailored technique. So if you shoot me a message, I'll probably won't get it. But if you ever catch in my lives on TikTok live, I usually go live often. If you got a question, hit me right there. Don't say you'll shoot me a DM because that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, I don't know I you answer my it. DM, so that's that's helpful. Yeah, every now and then at night, I'll sometimes go through them, but if. You got to know how to catch the attention of people and like these big creators put like some fire emojis because everyone's sending just words. But if they open their phone, and they see like a little fire. They might open they it. Might open There's it. some little tricks to getting getting, getting to those people. Getting those uh, big boys. That's to right. Answer. That's right. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Um, this is a great episode. If you love it, review, comment, share with your friends. And until next week, let's freaking get it. Yeet. That was awesome.